and scorenorth.com. I mean, we kind of suppress some of our emotions. It's kind of our role and what we do. So, um, you know, even when things are going real well and, you know, by the, by the book and according to plan, uh, we generally don't ride those waves very much. We, we have to immediately look at what we need to do next, what we need to do now and what we need to do next. So uh, that's what, a little bit of what we've seen over the first uh, 13 games, I think. Um, we've, we've seen a lot of that. <laughs> I feel like that's Judd's philosophy every time he takes the microphone to, to yeah. deliver his thoughts on the sporting events of the season, right? You're, just, am... you're, you're looking to suppress your emotions first, yep. put some space around your thoughts, yep. get very meditative, <laughs> and then speak. Is that fair to Constantly say? Constantly suppressing my emotions, and it's tough to do because I am <laughs> – the thing about me is that most people don't get I'm very, very deep, and like mm. I'm, I get hurt easy – Criticism bothers me greatly. And so I always try and think through my red hot takes for how is this going to affect the outside community that might be mad at me? Because I, so yeah, I mean, it, it's a day by day process, Phil. It, it's a day, it really you know, is. I'm yeah. always working through it. I, I actually have decided as of today's show mm -hmm. that if I'm on a take that I feel is just too hot and like I, it's like, you know what, the cousin stands might be really, really mad. I'm going to pull myself from the take. <laughs> um, and I don't care. Like if you guys are like, that's a great take. But what like, if you're coasting? What if you're coasting along with your? With right, your no, take? but I'm saying like you. You might be saying, oh yeah, go, Judd. This is awesome. I will stop, and I will <laughs> I will lift myself from said take, um, and I will call in a, a cousin Stan, perhaps. Mm. And what happens is sometimes when it's your third time delivering the take over the course oh. of uh, you know a week, you you. you, you you don't want you don't want the audience to hear that take for a third time. So you want to bring someone else in to finish the take, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's and what I could the, that's what the analytics say. And the best part is the third time through the state the take, I could have started it and, and like like let's say let's say for, for the sake of the conversation that we're on right now, the thread, if you will, that like I am five points into my third take, but I mean there's still points to go. Like let's say there are nine total. I'll stop right there. Well, I'll stop. Let's do this here, okay? Uh, Mackie and Judd, welcome to this Friday show. We've got Sports Movie Rewind on today's episode, including a great Kevin Costner sports movie. Not a baseball movie. Draft Day. One of the, one of the most insane draft days in NFL history that we're going to break down. But we're going to give Judd a little choose-your-own-adventure. We're going to go back in time here to yesterday's game against the Sox. The Red Sox. Sox. Twins Red looking Sox. to avoid a four-game sweep at home to the Red Hot Sox. And they won the game. Yep. So the Twins the twins have the, they snapped their five-game losing streak. But I want to go back to – we're going to put Judd in a baseball uniform here. So okay. you're going to you're going to dress up like Tom uh -huh. Kelly. I mean, I don't, would you go Sox high or would you leave him down if you're a baseball Oh, player? no, Sox high. Okay. Rocco yesterday went Sox high. Stirrups. Oh, I love me some yeah, stirrups. Well, stirrups. It's a good well, look. I mean – you know, it, it was Jackie Day, right? So that they're all wearing four, forty-two, I and Rock stirrups. and Rocco went stirrups. I absolutely thought it was a great look. I so wear them just casually sometimes. Just the stirrups too. Just and the like, stirrups, yeah. And a, just and around the else. apartment. That's, That's right. It. Just around the apartment. Yeah. Every, and some stirrups. Everything else flying right. free. Yeah. Yeah. Just so here's your choose your own adventure, okay? You, Judd Zolgan, yes. manager of the Minnesota Twins, have seen your team melt down several times already this season. Late, I'm in games, Billy. Okay, I'm Billy from last week. Oh, Billy, Billy Haywood. Uh, Billy, Billy Haywood. Haywood. I'm Billy Haywood go. now. A much more grizzled and uh, w I would say forlorn looking version of Billy oh, Haywood. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely Bill <laughs> Billy after being introduced to alcohol. There's no this question is, about yeah. that. This is how it started. This is how it's going. How, it's going. Yeah, this is how it's going, <laughs> Billy yes. Haywood. Yeah, and uh, your starting pitcher, Michael Pineda, who, by the way, over his last 15 starts, has a two and a half earned run average. He's been one of the better starting pitchers, low key in baseball over that 15 start stretch and he is dealing he's through seven innings and he is two batters over the minimum at that point with 88 pitches under his belt and your team holds a three nothing lead manager Judd Zolgad choose your own adventure what do I do here 
what do I do? Is that is that what you're saying? Do I lift him? Do I go to the bullpen? Because uh, by my count, I believe he was five batters through the third time, so he had actually been allowed to turn the corner and get the first like five guys, which is actually means I believe he was due to face uh, six through nine potentially, which one would think would be easier than one through five. But who am I to say? Uh, my own adventure. I mean, Hunter Let, Renfro is uh, lethal. In, let's uh, see here. Can I? Spot for, can I? Do you want me? Well, you know what? I'm going to throw a question right back at you as I choose my adventure, <laughs> and I want to know what you, what, how you want me to think of of this adventure that I'm about to embark on. Do you want me to choose my own adventure from what the to what the research says and just go by that, or do you want me to go by the research and also the gut feel of the fact that my team's on a five game? losing streak. If we lose, we're going to be 1-6 and six on this home stand. My pitcher is going great, Guns. I had, and I'll grant you this, it was a couple of seven-inning games, but I had a double header the day before, and I play in Anaheim tomorrow. Do you want me to use common sense, or do you want me to just go by what I know? Actually, I don't think the Twins' uh, structure allows for you to do anything but use a spreadsheet. So I'm sorry, sir. You have to oh, make this decision. Make, the banana's out. You have the, to oh, make this decision only Hansel based Robles on Hansel Robles time. It's Hansel <laughs> Robles time. The Undertaker coming in. <laughs> he does have great entrance music. Yeah. Bang, but like, but like bang, here, here's my question. How do you, and again, they won the game, congratulations, uh, <laughs> cause for celebration. It's great. Congratulations. It's great, okay. But how do you watch your team lose in the fashion that it lost in, in those two games against Houston with your two best starting pitchers, dealing, just dealing, most, for, well, Barrios was was dealing even more than Maeda was, right? But both Ma- were I feel good. like Maeda was kind of gr- grinding a little bit more, but... Yeah, and you, both were and good. you pull Barrios out of the game after five innings, if my memory serves me, and you bring in Co- the Cody Stashak, like all these dudes who come in, and you and they have to be perfect sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, rather than just leaving your lights out starter in for an extra inning. And I get it, third time through the order is a thing, but like there has to be some room for gut managing and and just sense of the game and. Boy, this guy is absolutely mowing down Red Sox hitters right now, and he's only at 88 pitches, and he's in his 30s. He's pretty durable by this point. Like, his arm's probably not going to fall off, and he's a free agent, I think, at the end of the year anyways. We're not trying to, like, protect his future like we might with Jose Barrios. Like, all of these things that would go into a gut decision in that moment, and instead it's, oh, the book says... He's facing the lineup for a third time, and he's at 88 pitches, and therefore we must take him out of the – like it was the most – you could predict it from a mile away, and then you could also predict Robles and the other relievers potentially struggling and uh, and that game becoming a grind. But like how do you not learn from what happened in the playoffs last year? That's what's mind-boggling to me. This is what we talked about um, at, at the start of this season, this very thing, which is, Rocco, show us that you've learned. And you know what, too? So – I understand that this comes from everybody who's important now with this team, from Falvey and Levine and Rocco. So I understand that this decision is not made in the vacuum of Rocco's mind. I'm doing it. It's sort of what their it's their philosophy on how to operate. But there has to be some room to give your manager the ability to use common sense. And common sense yesterday was we've dropped five consecutive games. We're playing. We're not playing well. And I, you know what? I don't know if it's a precursor of things to come, if it's just a little slump. It almost doesn't matter. What matters is you've got the chance to end it. You're up three rip. And your pitcher, who is a who is a hoss, by the way. So like this is not this is not a little man on the hill, you know. Oh my God, he might break in half. It's cold out and he's at 88 pitches. This is a hoss. The night before, and and I'm not even advocating this. But the night before, you saw Carlos Rondon of the White Sox be allowed to throw. And it, it was probably excessive, what, 114 pitches to pitch a no-hitter, okay? So, like, you saw that. And I'm not saying that that's a great idea. But Michael Pineda is not going to fall apart if he, let's say, gets near 100 pitches. And I'm not even saying he should have pitched the ninth for sure. What I am saying is common sense says... You bring him back out. And here's what I would like. Here's what I would like the Twins and and what I want Rocco to be. And this would start above him, but it would trickle down. You know, somewhere, Phil Mackey, there is a, there is a happy 
medium between your favorite National League club and the guy who managed said club growing up, Dusty Baker and Rocco. There, there is a happy medium. Okay, but so du- I'm but, not. But, but Dusty, I just felt my labrum tear. We need three more innings out of you, Mark Pryor. Du- Dusty, it's Kerry Wood. I'm your yeah. prior. You know, I, I, and, and I'm Mark Pryor. I'm your other prize project. My You're arm right, is you permanently are. twisted in this direction. Everybody threw complete games in my. But can't we get like? Isn't there something in between these two men as far as strategy goes? Yeah. Well, and here's here's the other thing, like. I've generally been a Rocco backer. I generally speaking, I love the Zen like mindset that he brings to a baseball team. Yeah, let's all let's it, this is a marathon. Let's not get too high, too low. Let's let players express themselves and let's not have a bunch of rules. Like let's let's look to make guys as comfortable as possible and I and I love that side of it and I think that has contributed to the Twins winning a lot of regular season games. But I think his biggest blind spot, he is a wishful thinking manager in a lot of ways. In his mind, and he said it off the clip that Declan played off the top, he said, we suppress our emotions when we are in high leverage situations and the game is on the line. We suppress our emotions and we take a deep breath. He's, But it's like he's talking about what he hopes the entire roster is able to do in these situations. That, listen, everything is the same. We treat spring training game number 10 the same as we treat an elimination playoff game. And we're all just meditating out here and uh, listening to fish in the clubhouse. And we're it's, it's all good, man. Like, we're just a super even kill, chill team. Well, like, in a perfect world, that would be great. That would be great. But you know what? When the game's on the line or when you don't have your best stuff as a reliever, like, you're probably not suppressing your emotions in those situations. So if you have a pitcher in Big Mike that is suppressing his emotions and he has a great handle on his stuff for that day, yep. ride that guy for an extra inning we're not ta- we're not talking about like 105 pitches to 130 here. We're talking about riding a guy or Jose Barrios in the playoffs, riding a guy that's dialed in that day and being able to know as a manager in your gut, not like his overall baseline performance, like, oh, sometimes Barrios gets wonky third time through. That's true, but today he's lights out. And you have to be able to make that decision in distinction as a manager and not just be wishful thinking that every reliever is going to come in and have their stuff dialed in. And and every game is the same for eight well, months, whether it's spring training <laughs> or October. And I firmly b- believe in the sports gods. And the sport, and you knew the sports gods were going to bite Rocco in the ass when he took uh, Pineda out. You knew it was going, that, that was an invitation to have the sports gods say, hold on a second here. We sort of granted you this wish today of this guy is going great guns. You you've not been playing well. Uh, he has he has allowed what one walk and a couple of hits and no run through seven. And you're gonna t- and you're by and you're by the book today, Rocco. The hmm. sports gods and and sports karma will bite you at times. And that, but, but that's where you also just have to know. Like this is not. This is not an everyday occurrence, and this is not an everyday. Like I don't always say, "Oh, that's a huge mistake." No, that's a mistake, right? Like a lot of times, he takes guys out, and it's absolutely fine. It's, it's like he could have stayed in, but he came out, and that's it's no big deal. Uh, but the Brios game um, in the playoffs, the Brios game in Milwaukee, when I would not have left him in for the entire game, but you certainly could have trotted him him back out again. He was outstanding. He had given up no hits, okay? He certainly could have pitched another I- inning without melting. Pineda yesterday. It's almost like Rocco looks at Sports Karma and the Sports God and is like, uh, I've got this one. Hmm. And they're not. They'll bite you in the ass every That's time. Like, he does not believe in the Sports Gods. I don't no. believe in the Sports Gods. I'm not saying that uh, that if you practice believing in the Sports Gods that, you know, like we don't have to have a big argument. But um, I think what he would argue off that game and decision yesterday and and the Barrios one is from a process standpoint, protecting your pitcher early in the season and getting him out before the big crooked number comes is what he would look to do. And I just think there's got to be more gray area there. There's got to be yeah. – you can't just be – you can't just be making that decision every single time a pitcher gets to the mid '80s in pitch count and pulling him from the game. You but why can't. does he? But why does he manage um, each pitcher and situation the exact same? Is my question. Like that's what I don't understand. Um, Pineda yesterday, he was going fantastic, and I would make I would privately, if I was to sit down with 
Baldelli, I would privately say what you said, which is, okay, as I said before, he's a Haas. Second of all, he's it, he's your third starter. He's a huge guy, and he's not our long term guy. Like, what's the very what's the very if he if he came out and pitched the eighth, what's the worst that's going to happen to him? What's the very worst? He gives up a couple runs. You take him out. I mean, they gave up three runs as is. So I d- I just don't see the downside to having him come out for the eighth. Yeah. By the way, our, our talking twins discussion here today, celebrating a big win yesterday. Clearly, we're in a very celebratory mood with this club right now. Uh, brought to you by Dennis Kirk. Dennis Kirk has been supporting Mackie and Judd and Scornar through a tough year, year and a half or so. And uh, even though it's been a pretty long winter, pretty long winter in a lot of ways for uh, for for baseball fans in the Twin Cities, uh, motorcycle season is on the horizon again. And so if you ride a Harley, whatever you ride, a sport bike, doesn't matter. You'll find what you need at DennisKirk.com. 160,000 parts and accessories in stock. Clothing and helmets as well. Order before 8 p.m. and they ship the same day. Plus, shipping is free on orders over 89 bucks. Best in the business. DennisKirk.com. Everything you need for your ride at DennisKirk.com. All right, should we, uh, any other final? Yeah, I got another one to, to complain about, too. <laughs> what's going on with the pitching staff? Uh, what's <laughs> Lewis Thorpe is going to start game one of a bullpen game. And by the way, though, here's the problem. You sent Stashik out. Now, last I checked, his crime is strikeouts. He's striking guys out, which last time I checked, before I checked, <laughs> his he was getting strikeouts, which you want, but his crime was strikeouts. Anyway, he had pitched too much. I don't know. He gets sent down, gone for, for 10 days. They call up a kid in the interim yesterday to be on the roster for that game. And post game, he gets sent out for Lewis Thorpe, who's going to be your opener tonight. Couldn't you have just picked another opener to start the game and kept Stashek here? I mean, yeah, I, 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 don't, ask, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know why I don't know why they sent Stashak out other than like he wasn't going to be able to pitch yesterday. OK, he can, he can certainly pitch today. <laughs> today, I think. Right. Right. But wouldn't you rather have him on your roster right now than Lewis Thorpe as the opener in Anaheim? Like, couldn't you have found a way, a workaround for somebody else to pitch the first two innings of that game tonight in Anaheim? It's weird. I I also feel like I thought I thought they were maybe priming Randy Dobnak to to give him three innings at at some point here during this weekend series, but uh, but I was wrong. So yeah, I, I mean, Lewis Thorpe <laughs> has had like three chances, and he's had he had the weird you, spring training episode. Was it a year or two ago? So, I would I like know. to I would like to submit my application for a new job with the Minnesota Twins LLC. I would like to be known as the Underthinker Coach. And that job will be when Rocco and the boys are overthinking everything, I come in and say, boys, let's dumb it down, okay? Let's think this through. Like, you guys are, you you are Harvard, but you're in your own heads, okay? Let's let's let some Benil get in here, all right? Okay, I don't know about that. Let's Here's let's what's amazing. Right? Underthinker coach Judd Zolgad. Now they have overthought Cody Stashak a few times in key games the last few years. We're like Cody Stashak is not to the point where he should be in a in a one run game against Aaron Judge in a playoff game, right? Like fair. So he's not on that level. But so far this season, he has struck out twelve batters in five innings. <laughs> <laughs> 12 yes. batters in five innings. He's, he's faced 23 batters this season. He has struck out more than half of the batters he has faced so yep. far. And he's going to be down in the minor leagues for a week. Like, it's just, I don't know. I don't know. It's under, under thinker coach. It's weird because, and, and, and again, is the logic, all right, we're going to be, we're, we're, we're going to, we're going to play, we're going to play chess while other teams are playing checkers here. Okay. Yeah, Stashak seems dialed in. He just struck out three batters. He now has twelve strikeouts in five innings, but he can't pitch tomorrow. So we should send him out and bring somebody else in. Let's let's leverage our taxi squad. But now you're without maybe your best strikeout reliever for a week and a half, right? Ten days, unless there's yeah. an injury. They could I suppose they could like designate someone, but, you know, to the injured list and bring him back. Which like they might just, do. They've done that before too. But, but I don't play I don't play chess, but it seems to me that hmm. you, you just made three moves to actually start to lose. Because here's the other thing. Maybe they're taking. You, on, you only bring up, you only do the move with Stashek if the reliever that you bring up to have in the bullpen on Thursday is almost certainly going to pitch in th- Thursday's game because your bullpen is totally taxed. That was never a threat of happening. Mm-hmm. It's like switching bat boys. <laughs> Why'd you do it? <laughs> it's, it's like, weird. what's the purpose? Yeah. 
No, it is uh, it is bizarre. It is bizarre. But uh, now they face okay, Mike I'm Trout done. for a few days. Okay. That right, looks I'm therapeutic. Done. But a big win. Big it win was. for the Twins. Big win. Big Get off that ends five game losing, losing streak. <laughs> Miguel Sano, as I told you and write that down. I gave you credit on He's embarking on a, a three-week hot go. stretch right now. And uh, 